after finishing indoors by a window, I want to find the next best thing. And to me, the next best thing is open shade. Light's still coming in in a direction. So I can still work into the shadow side of the face. And it's going to give me, again, depth and dimension in the photographs. And that's something you'll find me suggesting every time we discuss lighting. What I'd look for here is I want a background, again, that's kind of dark. It's going to support what's going on. And I like it, the background to be far enough behind somebody. Now, that somebody being your subject, I know a lot of photographers tend to put people standing right up against the background. It doesn't allow to really see. So what I like to do is I like to have somebody 10, 15 feet away from the background. Working at shallow apertures, that's going to allow that background to go out of focus. So with that, I'm going to have reinforce that depth and dimension. I often like to include, if I can, a foreground, middle ground, and background in almost every image. Sometimes I can't. If we're just dealing with traditional portraiture or getting some of these shots out of the way, I want to at least go into two of those dimensions where the subject is sharp and the background is soft, so it kind of makes that subject pop off the page. Hi, Donna. And then we'll... As I'm working in a new environment, I tend to be looking around and thinking ahead of the next shot while I'm actually executing the current shot. And if I'm working against a very dark background, I might want to change the key of the photograph by just simply finding a different background. So we don't have to alter the lighting, we don't have to alter lenses, we don't really have to move far. But I can go from a dark foliage background and move over to a wall, and now I've got a whole different color theme going on. You know, one of the most interesting things that we have to provide clients is a diverse group of photographs. And we don't have a lot of time to do this. So we can't really stage in different areas. I think we need to work in an area, get the most use out of it, and move on to the next. So in changing your backgrounds, one of the things I find really important to keep in mind is keeping the background simple. I don't want to have too many backgrounds within the background. And what I mean by that, if I've got a section of a photograph or a painting on the wall, I've got a section of a piano, a section of flowers, and two different colors of wall, there's way too much in the background to look at. So I want to keep it just uniform and simple. So if I move over to a color section of the wall like you see in this photograph, I can have it framed with the window moldings, but actually the main part of the wall has become the photograph itself or the background. You know, working in this soft, indirect light, everything's coming in in a nice direction, and you can probably see it on my face. I've got a highlight side and I've got a shadow side, and the way that it works over is a very soft edge transfer. So I positioned Anna here because it was just, it's very, very complementary light and it's very dimensional. So what I did is I worked with some close portraits first and then I backed up. And as I backed up, I shot a few full bodies and I tucked myself into some of the shrubbery here so that I could use that as a vignette in front of the lens. So it's kind of nice out of, out of focus green foreground that'll help just bring the attention to Anna. And as I came back in, because I had her leaning next to this window, you'll see the reflection in the window. And that just adds a little bit more depth and of course changes the composition a little bit. But it's really nice to have that soft light on one side and then see her complementing profile on the other side.